Hello. Today I wanted to share a secret to enlightenment. Now there's one of many that could be shared. They're mere pointers. And when I say it's an, a secret to enlightenment, I don't mean it will cause or lead to enlightenment. It is more of making the environment and conditions more conducive for enlightenment to happen. But I think there's still value to it. And what I want to share today is the idea, or the concept at least, of ceasing to self-maintain, ceasing self-preservation. There are so many things we do to build, strengthen, and maintain the me. Enlightenment, as I've defined it in the past, is seeing through the illusory me. It is really seeing that there is no me. Now, prior to enlightenment, this isn't the easiest thing to see or recognize because we very much believe in the me. We believe we are this, this person, this self. So what I'm suggesting is realizing and accepting and maybe even looking at all the activities that we do to maintain and strengthen this me. Because what we're doing is we're wearing masks. We're, we're, we, we have these roles, we've got these personas. Um, it's funny because we call ourselves pe uh, uh, a person. And person comes from persona. Um, and a per, you know, persona literally means through which the sound comes through. And what they're referring to is the Greco-Roman masks they used to wear with the big megaphone mouths and the open air theaters. So that way, not only was the mask the role they were playing, but it would project the sound out to the audience so everybody could hear. And that was the persona. And now when we, now we say, well, I'm a real person, <laughs> which funny enough is kind of like saying I'm a genuine fake, but we have these masks. We also defend ourselves. We have armor to kind of protect our feelings and protect ourselves from, from, from harm. And I'm meaning more mentally, not physically. Mentally, we have these defenses and armor to protect, um, you know, our self-value. So when enlightenment occurs, there is a seeing through the me. And then there's a... I guess you'd say a dropping away or a dissolving or decomposition of the me. It kind of falls apart. And with this falling apart, the masks kind of fall off. The armor falls off. And if there's still a little bit of residual me in there, it will feel very vulnerable. You'll feel naked. And the trick is to embrace and accept this and not retreat because immediately the thought will be, well, what could happen to me? I need to start putting this armor back on. I need to put my masks back on because it preserves and protects me. And we don't want to do this. We want to embrace the void, really. Embrace the total openness, which is a lack of limits. Because really... It's our efforts to maintain who we are and what we are is what limits us. And so if we let go of this maintaining and borders, the masks, the armor, it's just open, it's void. And the other way it could be experienced is liberating. It's liberating not to have all this. It's freedom. It's pure, total freedom. However, not that the experience is wrong or incorrect, but there could be an initial feeling of vulnerability, of feeling naked. And the trick is not to fear this, but to embrace it and accept it, to dive into the vulnerability. Because ultimately, there's no way to be anything but vulnerable. 
conversely, funny enough, is when you, you know, realize you're not this personal me and, and you embrace the void, although it initially feels vulnerable and naked, there comes the understanding and realization that nothing can harm you. If you could get over that initial fear as the last remnants of the me are kind of there, if you can get past that, and you, there's no real getting past that, that's another act of the me trying to get past something. But if you just accept and embrace the momentary nakedness and vulnerability, you may realize nothing can harm you. So, thank you much.